counter right here? Click on counter. Right here. Yeah. Now you have to click in the box. Corey, what's up, man? Everything good? Holding it down in the 919.
So what's going on? You guys had a good week? What's good with you, Corey? Everything good in the 919, man? Libby, you still on the other side of the world? <laughs> My man Corey is a team early. Corrupt 919 team early today. <laughs> Love it. I asked Libby, was she still on the other side of the world? One more time. One more oh, we time. Late. I'm coming. We're coming. We're coming. We coming. Good morning, Libby. Here we go, guys. Thanks for being so patient with us this morning. You right, Crop 919. Team early. Team <laughs> early. And we late. Sorry. Sorry about that. Hope y'all having a great Saturday morning. It's a little gloomy here in the DMV. But we're ready. To have, we have a good show for you today, so we're we're ready to get started in about ten seconds. <laughs> we celebrate. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when the show starts. <laughs> okay, baby. What's and going on? What's going on, guys? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy, where we meet here every Saturday morning at eleven a.m. EST to demystify your move. To the DMV. So since Tracy and I are such transparent people. Here we go with this transparency. You can now. also. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. We typically get talking about the DMV and moving to the DMV. But if you want to talk about North Carolina, no problem. You want to talk about Atlanta, no problem. We can talk about those things. You want to talk about South Florida? That's why we just call it conversations. No problem. Country. But mostly we've been talking about the DMV because that's where we live now. We do live in the DMV. So um, today we're talking about, uh, we visited the, uh, Old Town Alexandria. So we've we got did. footage for you guys. It was just absolutely beautiful day. And uh, what else? So we're going to talk about sharing. Union Market. Mm -hmm. Union Market in D.C. is, uh, we, somebody asked the question last week about gentrification. Okay. So this is one of the stories around gentrification mm -hmm. and what's mm -hmm. happening in D.C. in that area. So we're sharing. Sharing is sharing. And then for for uh, Design Your Life. Oh, yeah. Design Your Life. You know, we're going to be talking about how to make friends as adults. Isn't that weird that we have to talk about this? <laughs> I just really think we have to talk about this. We uh, It's important. Yeah, we celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary on this June, weekend. On June 16th. June 16th. And yes. we went out last night. We did. And we were sitting around kind of looking at people. <laughs> what were we looking at people? Yeah. And we were like, mm, people don't know how to make friends. <laughs> you know? So we were like, it, it's different, I guess, when you move to a new city. And I've seen it. I, 
I, I watch TikTok, y'all, and I want to de-brain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, people on TikTok are like, how come you can't make any friends after college or after high school? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you can. Right, you right, really right. can. It's a so it's, it is a technique it's to it. To it's it. a way to do it. You have to be a little bit more open yeah, so we're with yourself. So we're going to dive into that. Heath is yeah. really good at it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> just wait till you hear what he's going to say. I don't know Krupp. what he's going to say. My man Krupp now and I, he, he, he has some exposure to me and making friends and being friendly at work exactly he <laughs> is such i mean he they call and when he worked at his previous job they called him the mayor so because I, I knew everybody because he knew everybody he like he you kissing babies today are you waving the, what are you going to do a, be a grand marshal at the oh, no, at no, lunch it's, it's so, funny. <laughs> so if this is your first time here my name is heath and i'm tracy tracy and our parents podcasters and joyfully married after 31 years now. Oh my gosh, 31. Yes, yes. We're also also authors and um, certified no, marriage you're, counselors. You're an you're I'm an author. author. Okay, yeah, I'm an author as well. I'm a certified marriage counselor along with my my queen. We are parents of four. Oh my gosh. We have four adult children. children. We do not have or no Let's call them what they are. They're heirs. They're not because we're building the legacy. Right, so right. they're the heirs. Legacy. They're not children. Talk Let's about just it. get the the vernacular correct. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about it. Be about it. You know what I'm saying? How about the uh, How about the uh, shirts we rocking today, baby? Hey, um, oh, can they see? Can stand up. You get to see our tummies. <laughs> I got my shirt. I got Does my anybody shirt. know what this shirt is? Who knows? Does put anyone, the yes and no. Put the yes and no. Do you know what? Do you shirt know is? Do what you this know what shirt, shirt is? And do you know what it means? What it means? What it is? I what it means? What it's about? How many people know? Let's see. Let's see. Ed- so, so if they- you wait, so if you're watching live or if you're watching on the replay, drop down in the comments. If you, if you know, know what this what shirt, shirt is, is and what it means, what it, what it's about, what it represents, what it means. Etc. Yeah. We, we're just curious. We're going to tell you what it is. Hang on, in the show, we'll tell you. Put a pin. Put so, a pin in that. Yeah, and if you're relocating to the area, take a second and subscribe. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Subscribe. Hit the, hit the like button too. Uh, hit the like button. Can we hit the like button? Can we? Can you like it? Hit the like button. If this is some content that you're finding value in, and let you like what that, Queen that Trace and I are doing, the algorithm lets you let hit the like everybody button. know that y'all like what you're watching. Whether on the live or the replay, hit the like button. Hit please. the like button. Thank you very much. And, and uh, if you're not subscribed to Heath and Trace TV, why not? Why not? Get so it. our channel is a little different. We don't just talk about one thing. We have family vlogs on there. Mm. We also uh, put our podcast on there, mm. Joyfully Married After. And then this show is our live show. This is the only live show we're having right now. Mm-hmm. We'll mm-hmm. start our live show for jo- Joyfully Married After a little bit later. What's Joyfully Married After about, baby? Joyfully Married After <laughs> is a podcast okay. that we talk about life. Okay. Joyfully after, jo- joyfully married mm. after mm. life, basically, because mm. life gonna come at you when you're married. It's a relationship game. It's a re- relationship game. So Trying we talk. We give a lot of advice about that. We've been that's been going for a while. We got quite a few downloads on that one. So get check that one out when you get a chance. Up. Good morning, Re. Uh, y'all don't know what this. Okay, hey, Re got <laughs> it right. That's right, Juneteenth. So this is the Texas Star because they were the last to find out that they were free. Mm -hmm. This is the burst into freedom, and it's on the horizon. And the blue and the red, of course, are correlating to the United States flag. Boom. Boom. So the other flags you see out there are not the Juneteenth flags, y'all. This is the Juneteenth flag. Juneteenth. Let's let's raise our, you know, knowledge around (laughs) these things. So there it is. So there it is. Very good, Re. All right. So welcome to Conversations with Heath and Tracy. Heath and Tracy. Well, Tracy and I are here every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. EST to demystify your move to the DMV. And we also talk about anything else you want to talk about. So that's what's going on. So let's jump into it. So oh, I have to show y'all. Um, let me see. What's over? Okay, let me show you these. Look at Heath's flowers, y'all. My husband got up yesterday, <laughs> and he was it yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday because I didn't go to work yesterday. yesterday. Okay, I didn't go to work yesterday. Okay, Heath worked mm-hmm. yesterday. I did. I did. And um, this, I looked out my window and I was like, "Baby, what are you doing?" <laughs> I, had to, I was being proactive this week because typically on Saturday mornings, I know that I'm going to have to get up 
and go out into the garden and cut some fresh flowers yeah. for Queen Tracy as well as for our audience. He's so sweet. So that we have some nice color pops within the uh, context of the show. Right. So this week I said, okay, I'm going to be a little more proactive. So I went out into the garden and I said, okay, let me go ahead and cut the flowers ahead of time. And then that way Saturday morning I won't be quite as pressed and rushed and Tracy won't be yelling and be going, what are you doing? We got to get ready for the show. Why are you outside? <laughs> so I went outside and there was such an abundance so of pretty, beautiful colors in the garden. I went a little heavy on the. You uh, think you think you went a little? <laughs> I went heavy, a little baby? heavy on the. Uh, Did you have to go around the house clipping. looking for vases? You know, I know where all the vases are. Okay, there are still good. some other ones, some extra ones so that we you have. You want to show them what we have behind? Yeah, us? so uh, I cut. Uh, okay, yeah, so we we do the tour of the. Uh, wait, wait, baby, that's heavy. Let me uh, get it. Let me oh, get it. oh, you got the big vase yeah. today. Okay. Oh, is that heavy, baby? Yeah, that's heavy. All right, so this vase is a little bit bigger than the one I, that I usually use. I love So love this one I, um, I I put like in the foyer. No, it's like in the living room it lives in. Oh, this one. Li- yeah, this one doesn't live in here. Yeah, um, but it's a really tall crystal vase uh, that Tracy picked up. But what I love about um, this arrangement, I could have I could have tw- I could have tweaked it a little bit more. You could have. Um, but what I love about this is all the different colors of the uh, of the hydrangea, and then. Then uh, there was like one really cool tall rose that I found. I was like, oh. These are all in even our though- front yard, y'all. We don't have a backyard. So we have, <laughs> side a, yard. We have a huge side yard. We have a side yard and front yard. So everything everything in this vase I can't grows. I see, baby. It's in my face. <laughs> everything in this vase <laughs> grows in our garden. <laughs> and the other, wait, the, the other cool <laughs> thing. Wait a minute, baby. The other cool thing is like uh, this one is kind of like a different species than oh the other my ones. God. So that's kind of cool. It came from a different bush. And, and, he, we- and he clips them, guys, so that there's no bugs or anything. <laughs> They're in my face. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Put your questions in the comments, guys. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. We're so close. I was trying to turn. Oh, my gosh. My heart just jumped. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, flower drum is over. All right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you, Ree. Thank you, Ree. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. That was dramatic. Whew. Whew. Okay. I got I to calm down now. Yeah, that was close because this is glass that it sits on okay. and there's like electric stuff underneath it. It would have okay. been crazy, y'all. It would have been crazy <laughs> if that would have broken. Okay, let's move on. Are you okay, baby? <laughs> <laughs> you need one of my blood pressure pills? I'm pill? good. I'm good, baby. Good. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the next thing on the agenda? Oh, okay. So what are we talking uh, about? We're talking about where we went this week. Yeah, we went to. We um, went down to uh, Old Town, Alexandria. We went to. Uh, where, did, where else we go? Okay, I got stuff all over you. Yeah, mm-hmm. we went What's to. Mike. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> we went to Old Town, Alexandria. I'm gonna go ahead and turn. Um, go ahead and put that mm-hmm. on. Um, we uh, took a walk to Old Town, Alexandria. We did. We did. Yeah, it was so nice. We parked for $5, y'all. That's all it cost to park down there was $5. Mm-hmm. And then we just walked across the street to this park, and people were just chilling. It was so beautiful last weekend. Yep. In the D.C. area, it's not hot and muggy yet. It's mm-hmm. still just very warm. Yeah. It's It was in the 80s. I think it was like in the yeah, mid to high. It was, a, it was a gorgeous day, mm-hmm. as you can see. Mm-hmm. And everybody was just like chilling on the waterfront with their babies and with their dogs. And as you can see, here people park their boats on the waterfront yep and it does not smell i will have to say y'all mm-hmm. to be on a waterfront like, i don't know what dc is doing <laughs> but it did not smell at all yeah it was not that you know how y'all get that fishy kind of uh kind of mm-hmm. thing going on. Mm-hmm. it was none of that yep. and plenty of parking it wasn't crowded mm-hmm. i really really like going to this particular waterfront because it's just so much so many areas to sit and see and look that's yep. the water taxi i was telling you about that takes you up and down the potomac to mm-hmm. the other waterfronts right and uh, they have restaurants you can sit and get views of the water mm-hmm as you sit in the restaurant and the buildings that you see here are art buildings and people are uh, residents and residents there as artists. Mm -hmm. So you can walk in the buildings and buy their art and look at their art. They've got maps to show you all of the history of Old Town because it is very, very old. I don't know how old it is. I didn't get into all of that. (laughs) It's pretty old. But it's one of the oldest places in our country. Mm -hmm. And um, when you walk around, I mean, it's just everybody was just chilling. It wasn't touristy. It's not touristy yet. No, these are locals mostly. Yeah, these are all local Mm -hmm. yokels. And it just, it wasn't touristy yet. Yeah. It was more 
just hey i want to go i want to get out of the house mm-hmm. kind of thing as mm-hmm. you can see we're not wearing masks um people are just kind of strolling pushing the babies around no he doesn't know him he's just he's <laughs> waving at he's him. like there's some cool people right there look yeah. at you wave <laughs> how are you today yeah, and neighbor you can actually buy a drink as you can see here you can buy walk um, up get, just, get, get your, your beer get your wine and then you can walk over and sit in the park with the in the you know the dogs and everything were there but the people keep their dogs on a leash and yep. you can see on the area over there mm-hmm. where you can sit and just kind of chill out at the waterfront and yep. it was really really cool i was like tracy get the flowers take get the, get the flowers in the you shot know he was telling me what to do <laughs> he was telling me what to do the whole time the creative y'all. director he's the creative director and then you turn around you look up um what's it duke street it's queen street queen street you king look up street. the street and it's and people are just sitting out mm-hmm. eating this is a regular saturday it's like this all over the nation's capital yeah and then and you, this is actually an art installation right here with all these wood pilings these, oh uh, yeah that was so it's like the different water levels because mm-hmm. they've actually built out the waterfront over mm-hmm. the years so right. that's where the water used to be you got yep. a little playground here for the kids you look across the water there that's the mgm casino mm-hmm. and uh it's just really really cool really really cool vibe you could just sit there and just do nothing if you wanted to it's a free activity yep. and that's why we thought it was so cool because yep. it's just a, it's just a one of those places you can go you know you talk about how small uh everything is in the dc area but mm-hmm. people just kind of get out uh he t- he told me I was to like, get do the feet. this get the feet he, he told me to we do walk that, in. so i did it <laughs> um and it now we're walking toward the actual like road area people are biking mm-hmm. that's a big deal here you can mm-hmm. rent bikes all over the place it's just not a big deal they're like yep. the cruiser kind and then um this is dogs. where we ate we ate at feed and grain yeah for we lunch. did eat there it, it was, was really, very good it was really good yeah it was really really good and uh it was nice the atmosphere was nice price and was then, decent. yeah it was decent yeah mm-hmm. I, I did like the price uh-huh. and then the little ice cream shop across the street plenty of parking mm-hmm. so when you're in town make sure you go check out alexandria you don't have to live in alexandria old town right but to go down there you will find something to eat you mm-hmm. will find something to buy you will if you don't want to do either one of those things take a lunch and sit out by the water mm-hmm. and you know uh, grab an ice cream cone bring your dog bring your kids get the it's vibes. Just one of those it's so nice guys get it's the so vibes. nice it's it did very, start it, raining a little very, bit it was raining it was still it was overcast y'all and it mm-hmm. still looked like this yep. so that just gives you an idea but as you can see we're not wearing masks mm-hmm. um most of the people that live in this area are vaccinated yeah some people. So, some you know, I, I, right when now. I'm indoors, though, I do like to wear my mask. Mm-hmm. But when I'm outdoors, I just kind of chill out like most people do here. Yeah. And that's why you have so much outdoor seating because I just prefer to eat outside. Of course, my husband's looking at the flowers. Beautiful. He and then a lot of them. times and with I the... Took um, that, I just loved how the little old people were sitting <laughs> outside the ice cream shop eating their ice cream. They were just so cute to me. So I just, I had to get them in the in the vibe. A lot of times, too, what you're seeing now is people are uh, making sure that they're being cognizant of ventilation, right? Like so the doors are open. Uh, yes. That was at the end of it. Yeah, that was the end. So the doors are open to the facilities, or they have some type of cross breeze right. or things going on, right? So it's not. Uh, uh, it's not places all closed are not just in. closed yeah, in. Yeah, like because the weather's like they were. nice now. So I think a lot of places have made adjustments to like their v- ventilation, the HVAC systems mm-hmm, to be mm-hmm. better, right? Because there was some uh, some lo- a lot of data around how that was like transporting the virus and this and that. But I think that uh, it's great being outside, being outdoors this time of year. It's fantastic. And then the restaurants and bars and people are doing a really good job with the uh, with the ventilation piece as well. People are getting uh, their their vaccinations all buttoned up. And uh, and I think the, the guidance from the CDC is that if you're not vaccinated, then you wearing a mask wherever you go. Yeah, I, I still wear a mask, though. Yeah. But, you know, it's up to you mm-hmm. how you want to do it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. We, we don't get into that. All okay, good. who who would have think that would be a controversial subject? It's all good, baby. I know. It's so the good. next thing we wanted to talk about was union market. You all asked us a question last week about the gentrification and what's happening in mm-hmm, D.C. Mm-hmm. And uh, my daughter used to live in this neighborhood, so we have a lot of info on it. Mm-hmm. And it's northeast D.C., and it's right between New York Avenue and Florida Avenue. They call it the H Street Corridor. Mm-hmm. H Street, yep. Yeah, and there's not really a metro stop over there. There's, you know, you got Union Station, I think. You got... Um, a union market i think or i can't remember the name of it but it used to be like a big kind of open air market vibe over there mm-hmm. and it's really really changing yeah 
and um, you go over now, you got REI and you got Whole Foods and you have all these new buildings and everything. Yep. So this is one, uh, and you want to look at this article, I have it in, in the description below, but it's out of the Washington Post, so I don't know if you have access to it, but um, it, it says, in once gritty D.C. market, these wholesalers' world is slipping away. So you used to be able to go over there and buy wholesale meat, wholesale foods, just wholesale goods that a lot of street vendors use and everything. And now it's turning into this like uh, upper class neighborhood with condos mm. and higher end homes. Everyone's renovating the homes. It's really, really gentrifying the area. Mm. And I read the whole story and what they were saying was, yeah, it's good. It's nice over here and everything. But what about these people who have been here? Some of those businesses have been there since the early 20s. And to see uh, it just kind of slipping away from them, they have to move out to the suburbs. One guy had to close his meat market and get a job. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that that um, that's y you have a hard time dealing with when you're living in the city because it's like you want to see that stay. You wish it could stay. Mm -hmm but it's not going to. And so when you see, let's say, when you talk about owning a home over here now, you're looking at 700, and so the lowest price I can see is 699. Mm -hmm. You got 899 for a duplex, and you've got, how much is this one? 749. 749 yep. for, what is that, three bed, two bath, 1600 square feet, so it's a yeah, larger, a little, yeah, it's a little bit larger um, home. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, I think it's interesting now you do see that that price going down there is like a little mm. these are all new because it's still a hot market here yeah. in the dc area mm. and um let's see to rent what does it look like so to rent this is this Great is game. the problem this is this is the problem in that area mm -hmm. so if you look at the one that looks like a house of six sixteen hundred dollars a month that's actually four apartments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's sixteen hundred dollars a month for so the two bedroom one that's exactly what jasmine lived in with her roommate it is yeah for and those investors out there we call that a uh, quad, quad. A quad and it, it, a so quad and what they're doing with a lot of those quads is they're adding like a whole another two floors mm -hmm. or floor to it yep and um they're doing a lot of interesting things and with real talk about on one i'd be doing the same thing yeah we would we, we <laughs> talked about buying one and like splitting it up and making it mm. like a fan we talked about a lot of cool things with yeah, that yeah. but what happened is the neighborhood she lived in when she moved in over there it was kind of just kind of hood mm -hmm. you know it was just kind of hood it was just a regular you know boys sitting out talking on the street mm -hmm. people riding the bikes around it was just regular kind of hood yep. and she lived there for two years mm -hmm. and in the two years that she lived there it completely changed right 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 and she had to move because her landlord was selling the building mm -hmm. so um it was. It's just interesting. I'd like to go ride by that house and see what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, we have to it go was, over there. We haven't been over there in a while. That was, yeah. it's like that was Capitol Hill technically. Yeah, it's Capitol she Hill. She talked about that in one of our uh, in like our first uh, DMV DC video. That oh we yeah, did. she's supposed to be joining us next week. I think I'm gonna have to remind her. But she, five thousand dollars a month a for an apartment light? over there. For she gave a green light. Yeah, for she that? gave me the green light. Okay, cool. She gave me the green light. Five thousand. Five thousand a month over there for uh, yeah, and and so that just gives you an idea of mm. that neighbor. Good morning, Gina. That just gives you an idea up, of um, what that what that's what's happening in that area. Yeah. So keep that in mind when you're looking in the DC area. You're still going to be able to find those affordable places, mm -hmm. even though areas are gentrified. If you do want to live in a neighborhood like that. Um, but keep in mind that it, it would be short lived probably if you find something affordable unless you can buy it. And, and, and you can buy, you can still buy affordable things. It's mm -hmm. just that we have to be cognizant of people's lives and people's history and right, taking right. care of that and, and meshing it to one. It's so nice when you go over there. Yeah, you got whole, the Whole Foods is nice. It's like a two story Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. And all of that is nice. But what about the people that currently live there? And I will say this. When you see the rentals, mm -hmm. be aware. Mm -hmm. They want five times yep. the monthly rent. Yep. They do not just want first and last. Yep. They want first, mm -hmm. last, mm -hmm. a good credit score. Yep. And then you have to make five times times the rent <laughs> so they're doing that deliberately mm -hmm. to keep people out yeah that and in conjunction with making sure that they have a high quality tenant i think that's a terrible thing to say it's both well i mean in in, in terms of the landlord their 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 thought process, their perception of their a thought high process quality is tenant. hey i know the more money you make the easier it's going to be for you to make this rent so I want, if I'm going to segment my list of potential renters, 
I want the highest income people possible. But five times? Right. I mean, it's we, a little excessive. Four times. Five, four times. No, I've seen. it was five times. I've seen four times. Five times is a little excessive, I think. Five times is, is four, that's ridiculous. Four times is, is big enough. I think double or three times is, yeah. is, 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 a, is a, you know. Well, you know what four times does, uh, you know, I, I was watching the video that, uh, that we did with Jasmine uh, a couple, three years ago. And that was one of the things that we talked about in the video of how our advice was to stay around twenty five percent of your, your rent should your only be about a in quarter of your rent. Yeah. So they're like perfect world, right? Um, and sometimes people stretch themselves and do a little bit more, which I get, right? Especially in in, in places that she are a said bit more all expensive. her friends. She but the point I was making was that if you look at it, if you reverse engineer what people are asking for, okay, I need you to make four times the rent, then essentially that's what that is 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 twenty five percent. No, these people want five times. <laughs> there's, there's a few apartment buildings over there we looked at, Jasmine looked at. They wanted five times the rent. And I, I said, like, well, on, I'll just get on the lease with you. Mm-hmm. And and so when I got on the lease, they were like, yeah, we want to see all her bank accounts, and she need to have $100,000. I was like, I'm not giving them all of that. <laughs> I was like, to rent an apartment? Right, right, right. It was crazy, y'all. So yeah. be aware of that when you're looking at the new apartment buildings in yep. D.C. It's gentrifying, and the people that own those buildings are really, really trying to keep people out. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be The Most buildings are empty up. as heck. Right. Empty as heck. And then uh, the other part of that is that there are some buildings that have that those um, uh, subsidies built into for s- a certain percentage of the building, right? What do you call okay, that? Okay, so yeah, that does work. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, if you are moving to the city and you want to live in D.C., you mm-hmm. can go to the Washington. You can go to the D.C. Housing Authority. Mm-hmm. Go to their website and they have an affordability program. It mm-hmm. is excellent. Yeah. It is excellent. When you get here, you just have to take a little orientation class, mm-hmm. and then once you're in that class the the listings will come to you right they'll just come to your email and you'll have a certain amount of time to Mm -hmm. put together your package Mm -hmm. to apply for the residents there and these are these new fancy buildings and everything Mm -hmm. they will have certain apartments that they will give you but they're not they're not bad they're not they're not any different the the apartments aren't any different than anybody else's apartment so you just have to hurry up and get your application in and then grab and get you know because once you do the orientation you're mm-hmm. on the list so you just have to, they'll, they'll let you know how many units are available at what price and I believe it's um, 70% of your income if mm-hmm. you make let's say if you make 70 or eighty thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. you can get an apartment for like eleven or twelve hundred dollars yeah. under the DC affordability um, housing authority and we're talking about DC proper right now yeah DC proper yeah. I'm not sure if the outlying areas have programs mm-hmm. like that because their rent is just as much mm-hmm. so I'm just not I'm not sure I'm it's just all good. yeah it's all good. Should we uh, should we go into the comments now, baby? Should we do a little transition oh, yeah, in the show? You want, you want a little music, baby? <laughs> hey, guys, if you have any specific questions for, for me and the queen today, go ahead and put those in the comments now. This is the part of the show when we transition from one segment to another where we've been giving you some data points. Not to be confused with the things that you might eat that are called toast points. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to dive into the comments, engage with our audience, and make sure that you have the information in which you seek, or just the commentary will be seen from you saying hello. Okay, baby. So let's get into it. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's good morning, going on, Gina? Gina? Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Yes. Yes. What you talking about, Mr. I just you talking about the gentrification? I, I know, just. It's, just it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's just. a lot. Good morning, Care Double What's up, Care? Seven. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, thank, thank you for the shirt. Thank you very much. Represent. Thank we got to get it up because it's like. Thank you very much. We're always talking about July, July Fourth, July Fourth, mm-hmm, and it, and mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but as um, a person of color, mm-hmm. as a black woman, mm-hmm. I just really never felt that that attachment to July Fourth, even as a kid. Yeah, it was like fun to do the fireworks mm-hmm, and fun mm-hmm. to do the cookouts yeah. and everything, but I never really felt like. 
that's not really that's mm-hmm. not really our holiday mm-hmm. this we need to make this big y'all <laughs> we need to make sure we're getting the fireworks out we need to make sure we're taking the day off mm-hmm. we need to make sure that we're having the cookouts mm-hmm. um i didn't get my flag in time because i was gonna fly my flag <laughs> in front of my house yes uh-huh. i was uh-huh. but i didn't get my flag in time but it's i will good. be wearing my shirt today it's all good yeah and then uh, i've seen a little bit of uh, commentary around that right where this is the whole national holiday is a bit of a distraction, right? We really need real change, and we need the the governmental entities to kind of do some more around well, some you of these know, policing, I can have a these whole other conversation things. Around that. But the point I think is that we want to make sure that we are also in a mental space of gratitude, gratitude, right? And really just appreciating the opportunity to, to have something like Juneteenth as a federal holiday and the recognition and the education that starts as a part of that, that so many people really need to educate themselves around that. And it's just great reminders of, hey, you know, the, the country is, is far from perfect, right? It, it, it's a great place that we live, but it has its warts and it has its history and that's just what it is. And so we need to understand and acknowledge that. And people need I'm to... Not <laughs> people, especially especially our light expression brothers and sisters, need to understand and do some homework instead of having your head in the sand or being willfully uh, ignorant around these things. Yeah, and if we could just get a voting right act, that, would, <laughs> that would be nice. That would but be shout nice. out today to Juneteenth. Juneteenth, we're going to keep go. it light, y'all. We're going to keep there it light. There you go. We're going to keep it light. We ain't going to get too deep today. No, we, did, we, did we finish going through the we'll commentary? Uh, you just finished watching the video. For, oh, okay. Oh, that video, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. That's a good video. You. That's a good video. Yeah. We sat down and, uh, what, was, what was that video? Two or three years old, four years old? I don't even what know how video? old that video. The video that, that, that we did with Jasmine when we sat down and when we sat down outside and we had the little lights behind us and all the pretty. That, that's been about two years. About so two she, years. she'll be joining us next week, I mm-hmm. believe. I'll, I will confirm with her, but she'll be joining yeah. us next week. So we'll, we can talk to the millennials. Yeah, that was a good video. We were That video was a little more D.C. specific. Um, but we, were yeah, yeah. City, we were at City Center. I, I'd love mm-hmm. to figure out how to do the live show remote. That would be mm-hmm. so much fun. I'm, I'm getting yeah, there, y'all. We'll make it there. I'm yeah. getting there. It's okay. So uh, you, hit y'all. the like button if you like anything you hear. Um, I think we're going to go ahead. We don't have any questions today. That's cool. We got all our old heads somebody, on here. Somebody asked a question earlier. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I did see that somebody question. Somebody asked wait, a question. Wait, wait. There we go. Nev. Nev, welcome to the show, What's Nev. Up? Or is it Neve? We didn't, you know how it is we didn't on figure Catfish? Out, yeah, we didn't figure out if it was Neve or Nev. But welcome back. Good to see you. Good to have you again, uh, Brother Santos. So we've got, where is a good place for black middle class people in D.C.? Oh, uh-huh. So this this is um so so DC Metro DC the DMV DC so specifically many places. Yeah. It's, this is why we moved here. Mm-hmm. It's one of those places where you can move just about anywhere True. and feel really comfortable. Right. I think uh, if you go back and look at our videos, we we've touched a lot of those areas. Mm-hmm. PG County is mm-hmm. where a lot of middle class or upper class black people live. Yeah. PG County is the spot if mm-hmm. we just want to be really, really specific. Mm-hmm. You can do mm-hmm. Upper Marlboro. You can do uh, Bowie. You can do Mitchellville. Yeah. And, and we did a deep dive on that last week, too. Yeah. So check yeah, out last we week's show. Check out last week's show. We did yeah. talk yeah. about that. Um, Falls Church mm-hmm. in Virginia. Mm-hmm. You've got um, uh, the, in, Burtonsville. In, in the in city, it used to be like, like the 16th Street corridor, right? Is that still? Yeah, it's is still, still, it's still that a way? lot of um, uh, uh, the 16th Upper Street. Upper 16th Street corridor mm-hmm. um, area is where a lot of uh, the old heads live, mm-hmm. and uh, they're still there. But you know, they're 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 transitioning, and their children are selling the homes. Yeah, LaJoy Park is changed. LaJoy so. Park, well, Shepherd Park, maybe. Huh? Shepherd, that that's it. Shepherd, Shepherd Park. Park, yeah, you're Shepherd about? Park, guys. LaJoy Park, that's Shaw what we're talking about. Upper 16th is, uh, Street has changed some. Um, yeah, LaJoy Park used to be uh, mm-hmm. middle class black uh, mm-hmm. over by Howard University, but that is slowly changing. Yeah. Also, um, the houses are big, but a lot of professors still live over there mm-hmm. um, in the Little Droit Park area. Yep, yep. But yeah, PG County, if you want to keep it real simple mm-hmm. and just dive right in and, yep. and live somewhere and then check out the rest of everything. Big concentration of folks. Big over there. concentration of yep. us over in PG County. We didn't move to P- We wanted to move to PG County, mm-hmm. but we didn't move to PG County because it's too far. It was too far from where Heath has to go into um, work every day. Yeah. So there you go. PG County. All good. 
Who uh, else and is, it's who not else hood. Is? Don't let people tell you that PG County is hood. PG County is not. <laughs> it's not hood. Yeah. It has gated communities. Uh-huh. It has golf courses. It has mm-hmm. country clubs. It is not hood. Mm-hmm. Every area has a hood area. Let's just keep it real. Mm-hmm. We live in a very affluent area, and the hood is just not that far from here, y'all. Right, right, right. So it's, it's don't let people convince us that our areas are any less desirable than other areas. Yeah. Every area, and let me tell you, and we're going to go back to like the crime statistics. Mm-hmm. Don't read a lot into the crime statistics. They do not report crime in their areas mm-hmm. because since we've been doing the show and mm-hmm. we look at crime reports all the yeah. time, yeah. one thing we notice is that <laughs> theirs will be straight up blank. Then the other thing you have to consider too is that uh, any of the areas that are quote, quote, you know, run down or a little hood or that kind of thing. Those are just buying opportunities for for the uh, investors and developers, right? And yeah, so, they want it to deteriorate yeah, so they know, can buy it up. Yes, yeah, so Southeast DC, as an example, might not be uh, you know the best part of DC today, but you can rest assured that tomorrow it will be. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's this care. Oh, yeah, that is a great video. We had to split it up into two parts. If you haven't uh-huh. seen it, it's, it's pros and cons of DC, and it has our daughter's face on it. Yeah. And yes, yeah, she's such a sweetie pie. <laughs> she's such a sweetie pie. Knowledge Humanity, welcome to the show. What's up, knowledge? Welcome to the show. And it said, last time you mentioned Howard building a new hospital, any idea when it might be going up? I couldn't find much info online. So, yes, mm-hmm. they are building a new hospital. Um, let me see if I can look. Go ahead and talk about it, Heath, so I can look it up real quick. What are you talking about, Howard Hospital? The new Howard yeah. Hospital? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, Howard University Hospital, the the president of Howard University, um, Dr. Wayne A.I. Frederick, uh, phenomenal, phenomenal man. He's such and a cool anybody guy. who's watched the show or if you keep up with me on LinkedIn, know that I am a huge fan of uh, Wayne, Dr. Wayne A.F. Frederick, who was also at Howard University matriculating as an undergraduate when I was there as well. So really have a huge huge admiration for him and the work that he does, right? So not only is he uh, the president of Howard University, not only is he an MBA, he is also a board certified surgeon. So he still practices medicine uh, at Howard University as well. And he also continues to teach students who are on the medical track uh, in the medical school at Howard University uh, in conjunction with doing a a number of uh, community work He's been very active around um, the COVID-19 and all of the um, making sure that people in the community had access to medicines and information and all that uh, via Howard University. And so, um, but he is also very public about saying that Howard University does not necessarily need to own and run a hospital. Yeah, it's a lot. So from that perspective, uh, I think what has happened over the last couple of years is Howard has decided to partner or undertake a, sort of a management agreement. So there's another big kind of uh, healthcare company that's going to be managing that hospital. And he's also been working with the mayor, um, Muriel Bowser, around um, putting together a new hospital to serve the city. Pictures. I see the article. To serve the city as well as to continue to have a place where doctors from Howard University can be trained. Yeah. Right? Because uh, I think as we mentioned uh, last week or one of the other weeks is that uh, um, a good percentage of the black doctors in the United States are, are actually trained at Howard University. Right. So what happened was uh, St. Elizabeth's Hospital was closed down years ago. It was a mentally mental health hospital, and during the Reagan years, they closed down. They closed it down. So that area has been um, just vacant forever. The DC uh, DC owns that. What so area are you talking about? Man? Where St. Elizabeth where St. Elizabeth is? Which is where? It's in uh, Northeast, I think, somewhere. Okay. So uh, what happened? What happened? What what happened was what happened. Uh, the D.C. Council awarded rights to building a new hospital there to George Washington University. And they also closed Providence Hospital. And they closed Providence Hospital where our child was born, where Jasmine was born in Northeast D.C. And when she was born, it was brand new. It was Mm. just a brand new facility going in. So they've closed that hospital. So that whole area of town doesn't have any facility now. So Dr. Freddie was like, whoa, 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 whoa. That means everybody's going to be coming to Howard. And that's what happened. Everybody started coming <laughs> to Howard University. Mm-hmm. And then they started. Howard University Hospital. Right. So then they were like, oh, we're going to build this new hospital in Southeast, that mm-hmm. area over there. And they're going to let George Washington University run it. Mm-hmm. He was like, no way, Jose. <laughs> we literally had like a national campaign, mm-hmm. alumni supported. Yep. 
that was like, no, you're not going to let them mm -hmm. run that hospital for our people, mm -hmm. right? And then so, the net effect of that, of course, would have been that you would Howard have had University a place. wouldn't have had access to the people for their, for their doctors and training to have a training ground. Right. That was the major thing it was like mm -hmm. we we got we don't have enough black doctors as it is and now you're gonna shut out more black doctors it was actually, it was, so it became a national conversation it became a national conversation right. so we shut it down mm -hmm. we they had to redo the bid they had to redo everything mm -hmm. and at the end of that after uh dr frederick he went he was on national news mm -hmm. channels talking about this yep. so after dr dr frederick did everything they said okay howard we'll just go ahead and build you a new hospital Mm -hmm. So they're actually going to build a new Howard Hospital on like Howard's that. campus. And we're like, that's fine, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But you can't. And so they're doing, um, it says they're doing uh, a partial tax abatement for 20 years mm -hmm. valued at $225 million. Okay. That would allow Howard to take real estate parcels on its campus, mm -hmm. prepare them for commercial development, mm -hmm. and monetize the abatement mm -hmm. to invest in developing a new hospital. Mm -hmm. um, a $25 million investment from the District of the Infrastructure to be included in the city's budget and $26.6 million over six years to create actual programs. Yep. Um, that would come in the form of services Howard would provi provide mm -hmm. around sickle cell disease treatment, mm -hmm. women's health, oral health, mm -hmm. trauma and violence prevention, mm -hmm. and substance abuse. I'll put this in the um, the, the notes, too. Yeah, that's all good stuff. Okay, so that's yeah, it's right we're getting a new hospital at Howard University, yep. and um, Adventist Health runs Howard yeah, University Adventist currently. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last few years, they've run a profit. Mm -hmm. They've run a profit. So Dr. Frederick's doing some great things over there. Shout um, out to Dr. Frederick. We, we could talk about Howard forever, 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 forever. So <laughs> let's see. And uh, MR says, I just want to say you two are my favorite. Oh, my God. I found your page looking at videos and living in Howard County. I'm looking to re relocate from uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. So what do you know about Howard County, babe? Howard County is in Maryland. Yeah. Howard County is in Maryland. It's about, it's a good little run from the city center. Um, but a lot of people live. Oh, wait, Howard. stop. Logan Spencer just gave us a super chat. What? Whoop, boop, 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 boop. Thank you, Logan. Logan Spencer. Logan, Logan Spencer. Yeah, Happy Juneteenth. Woo. Happy Juneteenth. Thank you, Logan. Where is, okay, Appreciate you, Logan. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Logan. Thank you. Thank you. We'll put it in the, we'll put it in the bucket, man. We can always use that. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I just want to say, so yeah, Howard County is mm. north. It's north of the city, mm -hmm. north northwest, I think it is. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll do we'll do a little breakdown on uh, on a future show for you, Mr. Just to give you more information. But mm -hmm. the houses are more affordable in Howard County, and um, it's close. It's like if you're gonna do between Baltimore. And D.C., it's a good place uh, to live. Yeah. So just depending on what your goals are, you know, as we always say on the show, right, when the, in the spirit of designing your life. It's Columbia, if, if basically. You, Columbia, Maryland. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to go back and check out uh, one of the shows that we did where we did a deep dive on Columbia, Maryland, we, we profiled that area uh, some weeks back. So check that out. Uh, but the point I was going to make was that if there's specific reasoning that you need to be there, uh, family, job, yeah. what have you, right? Make sure that you're just thinking about the move in totality, right? What's what's going to be the best scenario? How should you put everything together? Do you right. need to live there? Do you, are you going to work there? Are the children there? Is there an elderly parent design or relative it. We there? always say design your life. Do it on purpose. Yeah, do it purposefully. Absolutely. Do it with purpose. And then Logan also asked, what part of D.C. to move to mm -hmm. for a 30-year-old black single man who is seeking to be around other young mm -hmm. black. So I wouldn't move to Howard County. Mm -hmm. uh, I would move to D.C. proper, mm -hmm. um, Arlington proper, Roslyn, Clarendon, uh, Tyson's Corner, uh, even Reston, mm -hmm. before I would move to Howard County. You could do Silver Spring, downtown Silver Spring, if you want to stay in Maryland. Shaw Howard University. Shaw Howard University, <laughs> Union Market, the area we just talked about today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of a lot of my daughter's friends live in those areas, and that's where she lived. She lived. She stayed in D.C. proper. There's a joke mm -hmm. that when you're dating in D.C., if somebody lives across a bridge, it's it's too far. They have this <laughs> joke on TikTok where they they put in um, the the sound from the Lion King, and he says, "See that over there." <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, never go there. And it's like a joke with, with the young people in D.C. proper. Like, next week we'll have her on here to talk about it more. But it's it's funny because she's like, she lives in Virginia now. And mm-hmm. so it's like she kind of sticks to the people that live in this part of Virginia. Mm-hmm. But she goes into town a lot. It's a still, it's it's, it's, ten, it's 10 minutes. It's, right. just, it's just not that. From big. where we are in Arlington. But like yeah, Howard minutes, County yeah. for young and single. I'm not so sure about that. Mm-hmm. I would definitely go ahead do the roommate thing for a year. Mm-hmm. You know, tell me about your your coworker that did the roommate thing and ended up switching. It. But it was easy for her to switch it up, right? Are you t- you talking about the one who just got her own place? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that uh, you know our daughter. I mean, so many people uh, that are in your age group certainly is, uh, are are doing roommate scenarios right. in the city, right? And so I think what's cool about that is that it gives you the opportunity to sort of just absorb everything that the city has to offer. You're right in the midst of things, right? You learn how to kind of navigate leveraging Metro, jumping in a Lyft and Uber, what have you, to get to and fro. People are walking, people are biking, people have Vespas, people are doing electric bikes, electric skateboard, whatever they call those Long things. Boards. Long boards. Brennan, Brennan, our son. I mean, uh, so the city is just like, uh, it's, it's it's real city vibes, right? It's, uh, and so you have the opportunity to do that when you take on a roommate or two or three, depending on the scenario. And so we would advise that, right? So you come in, you experience the city, and then you can kind of move and adjust from there, right? If you want to get your own place, you're getting your dollars up, you want to move further out or you know you're working somewhere else so I, we, we're definitely advocates of of uh experiencing the city and and and, and grabbing yeah. a roommate or two. at your age move in the city yeah. Could grab a roommate you know if you can't afford to yeah. have a place in here and you really don't want to live by yourself when you mm-hmm. first move here if you're single yeah. you really want some type of interaction and then always just be ready to move out that's all and people are all, people are always out there uh even people that don't have like tons of of people to move with them, like single people like you are also looking for roommates. Right. Right. It's, hey, it's I common. found this great place. Yeah. Anybody looking for a roommate? And, they, and it's usually a here. really nice place. It's, yeah. That's why they want roommates because it's a really nice place. Absolutely. The older buildings are have larger rooms. Mm-hmm. Keep that in mind. But they don't, for most of the time, they don't have central air. Mm-hmm. Um, and the new buildings, the rooms are smaller. It's mm-hmm. more expensive. The older buildings, the the rooms are larger. The fixtures aren't completely up to date. Yeah. They're a little bit cheaper, mm-hmm. but they're in the really, really good areas of town. Yeah. The only issue, now, when you're looking at um, apartments that have been renovated, mm-hmm. be mm-hmm. aware. Just yep. be aware. Um, I would Vermin e- and bugs. Yeah. And I would either pick, and if you pick an old building, be mm-hmm. aware. Yeah. Because what's happening is there's so much construction going on in the mm-hmm. D.C. area. Vermin are going, they're moving away from the new stuff, going to the older stuff. Because uh-huh. they can get in, to the, they can still get in. And the, it's, it's, it's an issue. Just something to be aware of. If yeah, you, if, if you're, you're in, in the, the city, city. Yeah, you may have some, some vermin situations. So just be kind. So. Yeah, and that's another reason we, we decided to like not do this. There's a lot of reasons to uh-huh. not do the city, but we decided not to do the city because we're just not used to it. <laughs> when we lived here before, 30 years ago, we were used to it. We were, we were, used to, we were you know, young. You're walking, yeah. you see a rat cross. Okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but we've been living in the suburbs for 30 years, so we, we're just not. Rocking I'm not, in the suburbs. Now, we, we do have mice, don't we? Do we have mice outside? I saw a gray mouse in our backyard a few months ago. But we have traps out there. We have pests come. Yeah. And they pest guy But I've come. never seen one in our house. No, no. Not in the house. <laughs> hey, no. Do you remember we had that gray mouse in our apartment what? when we were when we first when we first Where is this? <laughs> when Jasmine was born. When oh, Jasmine in the was basement born, apartment. And we lived in the basement apartment. Oh and we God. had a gray mouse that got in there. Oh my God. And I think I like I ran faster than you did. I was pregnant too. <laughs> I was pregnant. <laughs> so our guy came in. We were like, yo, man, I think we saw a rat. Yeah, <laughs> he came in there, he put a little trap in there. He he caught the thing. He was like, he it was just like a little gray mouse, man. What's going what's going on, man? Well, you had like it was like a giant, like a six foot rat. <laughs> oh, that thing was so funny. Uh, uh, we but that was the first time we, I'd ever seen. We don't you know, do like in the house. Yeah, and we grew up in the south, so yeah, it's, it we just funny. not. We don't see that now. Snakes. I'm used to snakes. Right, I'm right, not right. used to. I'm, I'm not used to mice. <laughs> 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 All the good old days. Oh, the good old days. Let's do some transition music. We're gonna get into talking about how do you make friends as an adult? Mm. How do you do that? So we've entered another transition of the show. 
we really appreciate everyone being here and it's not quite time to go but we're getting into the mindset portion of the show get your mind right so make sure that you'll be in the know with the Heath Tracy show (laughs) out the door Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. I got some notes. I want to make sure that I uh, do a deep dive into um, this content here for our audience because we, we love you guys so much. Making friends as adults. We went just, just to where we got this idea from. We went out last night and we're sitting in this. Uh, oh, this is another thing about DC. There's a lot mm-hmm. of speakeasies here. We were in the speakeasy last night. Yeah. So it's speakeasy. That was after dinner, though. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a uh-huh. hidden lounge uh-huh, that uh-huh. doesn't have a lot of people in it. And then mm-hmm. they have, they don't have bartenders. They have mixologists. Yes. And it's usually like a really, it usually doesn't have windows. Mm-hmm. It's usually like in the basement mm-hmm. of a building. Mm-hmm. And it's, you have to know where it is. Right, right, or right. Or you, you know, when you're walking by, it just looks like a regular door mm-hmm. kind of thing. And mm-hmm. they're all kind of hidden and they're small and they're really intimate. Yep. But go ahead, baby. Let me go ahead now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so design your life. Making friends as an adult. Making friends may seem like an odd topic to share about, but it's actually a really important one. It can be really lonely as adults. Yeah, I think so. Yes, it can be lonely for kids too, right? But of course, we're talking about adults and we're talking to adults. Yeah, especially singles, especially singles. Study after study shows that loneliness is an epidemic impacting a lot of people. Especially in Japan. I've heard about it a lot in Japan. A recent Harvard study found that 36% of American adults report serious loneliness, including 61% of young people aged 18 to 25. 18 to 25? Mm -hmm. Really? And 51% of mothers with young children. Oh, that seems so odd. The United Kingdom actually appointed a minister of loneliness. We need one here. I think we need one in the United States. What do y'all think? Y'all think we need a minister of loneliness in the United States? I think we do. In 2018... Um, Japan followed suit with their own minister of it's loneliness. It's really, it's really bad there. Well, let me tell them about Japan really Get quick. Get into it, they, In Japan, uh, the older people were so lonely mm-hmm. that they were doing many, many crimes, mm-hmm. like really like little uh, petty theft crimes, mm-hmm. so they could go to jail mm-hmm. and be around other people. Yep. I was like, what? Mm-hmm. So what? What what we're advocating here, and, and why we thought that this article was important and, and this concept is that, hey, when you're an adult, and especially in the spirit of designing your life, well, you want to make sure that if you're going to go to a different place, a different city, or even in the city where you are today, right? You, right. There, there are things that happen in life that cause you not only not to make friends, but it also can cause you to lose friends. And in this article, I was also reading some things about, uh, as an example of that, when you are in a relationship, you're married, you have children, then statistically, we're going to have a few fewer friends than other people, right? Just because your life, yeah, your life, and your spouse, right. and your work, and just the normal things Busy. that you're doing. I, I had a girlfriend cancel on me this weekend because something came up. Yeah. You know, I get it. So know? it causes you to lose friends over time. So that's one. I, so that's she's one thing. Still my friend. She's still your friend, baby. Yeah. But people do lose friends over time because of just life in general. But we haven't done that. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I understand. But, but we, we make an effort. We honestly make an effort to interact with our friends. You have to. We do. We do. So the first thing that you want to do when you get into social situations um, is that you want to assume that people like you. Oh, I like that. Right? Because what happens is you may go to um, an event or function or whatever it is, and you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, they're going to think I'm weird or they don't gonna really like me or whatever. And so it, it causes you to be kind of regressive in your how you're interacting. Like, for example, when we walked into the speakeasy last night, I had on this really flowy kind of <laughs> kind of get up. And I walked in, and this, uh, this guy, what did the guy say? He was like, oh, look at you. I love your dress, And I was like, girl. oh, okay, yes, thank 
cute. <laughs> and we could have had a whole friendship. We could. We could have started a whole friend. Hey, this thinking you tell them where you got it from mm-hmm. and why you wore it and everything. Where you from? What's you your just name? Jump into it the conversation. Because right, right. him saying, "Oh, you look beautiful. Oh, mm-hmm. I love that dress." Right. You can start a conversation, a small conversation, just around that little thing right there. Mm-hmm. Don't just say thank you and keep going. Yeah, I got another pro tip about um, about assuming that people like you. I uh, since I'm a coffee drinker. Uh, oh, I, 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 I made a, him a coffee drinker. I wish I'd never made him a coffee drinker. I read an I article did. one time that said that coffee makes you like your coworkers twelve percent more. Oh, <laughs> but I don't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. But I'm trying to help people make friends, baby. Okay, yeah. So the point is, right, one of the things that you need to do in order to engage, especially if you're, you know, recluse or if you're, you know, an introvert of sorts is you got to be in a good mood. Yeah, you right? do. If you need a mood adjuster, get one. So if you if you're single and lonely. So the article talks about that adjust too. Adjust your mood. It talked about self-talk, right? Telling people, "Hey, that people like me." When I talk with people, they like me, they enjoy me, and you know they enjoy being being uh, in conversation. So S. Smith mentioned something. She uh, she said divorce yeah. causes you to lose friends too. Yeah. I don't get invited out with other families, mm-hmm. even though I have four kids. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, because these are the things that happen in life, right? So, so uh, what Smith is identifying here is that a lot of your friendships sometimes can hinge on your relationship with your spouse. With the other, yeah, I can right? see that. And so, see that. so there are a number of things that people that will happen with adults and to adults and causes adults to lose friends, which yeah. enhan- enhances what we're talking about here, the feeling of loneliness and having fewer and fewer friends. But the engagement with people is really important. Yeah. Right? So, um, yeah, that's a good point right there. Random McCray says, one thing I like about the DMV is people mm-hmm. are generally friendly. Yeah. People are really friendly yeah, here, we found guys. That. Mm-hmm. It, more so than when we lived in North Carolina. People just kind of look at us mm-hmm. in North Carolina. But here people are, hey, what's up? Yep. Hey, how's it going? Isn't it beautiful? I mean, I'll be at the store and people just start mm-hmm. talking to you about the strawberries. Right, it's right. just like, it's so great. It it's is. so great. It is. So the second thing you want to do is that you want to initiate. Right? Yes, you do. So you want to make sure that you're engaging people. If you go to an event, if you uh, um, you want to make sure you identify maybe a book club or uh, some things that you're interested in in your town or in your new town or in your new place, right? Put those on your calendar. Understand, okay, we got the rock climbing club. We got the book club. We got this meetup over here. Okay, I need to put that on my calendar and I need to prioritize it. And you need to go. And I need to go. And then when you go, don't not engage. And then when you engage, <laughs> you over in the corner, you done gone to the event, you done, done all this, and you over in the corner scrolling through Instagram. Please stop. It's like, come on, man. That's, that's other thing. People go out to dinner. Right, right, right. We saw um, in the speakeasy last night, they mm-hmm. had these two beautiful sofas. I was trying to look under them and see, <laughs> what, but I didn't, I didn't do that. So there are these uh. two beautiful suede sofas facing one another, and they had these guys you could tell they m- deliberately met up yeah. to, you know, hang out. Mm-hmm. And they sitting over there like this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to say, get up and leave. <laughs> you can do that at home on the on the john. You're taking up space out here. You're taking up space. Yeah. So you have to make sure that you're initiating, right? You're initiating yeah. conversation, that you're engaging with people, and that you've gone to the event, you've made it a priority, you put it on your calendar, you put it on your clothes, you went to the thing, you went to the place, you went to the meetup, you went to the book club, and now you're not talking to nobody. Yeah, I think another thing is if you are alone and you go out, go sit at the bar and talk to the bartender mm-hmm. or go sit in the cook person. Talk to the cook people. Mm-hmm. You'd be amazed because they know people. Right. And then they start talking mm-hmm. to, oh, you met so-and-so. I've met so many people like that. Right. All right. The next point is keep showing up. Right. Like if that. you If you are being intentional about creating friendships, you want to make sure that you're engaging with people. You're going to start putting these things that you're interested in on your calendar then you want to make sure that you continuously are showing up for those things, right? And so you and I have been talking about creating an event here in the DMV, right? Right for our audience, for our community. And so I think that we, when we start doing those regularly, then you don't want to come to one and then not show up anymore. It's like 
I'm coming here because I'm creating kind of this new vibe, right. this new community that I'm a part of. So when Heath and Tracy do the next one next month or next quarter or whatever it is, I'm going to go to that one too. Yeah. And I'm going to make some new friends and I'm going to talk to some people and it's going to be dope. They have a place here in D.C. and there's one in Atlanta. It's called The Gathering Place. Mm-hmm. And it's not a plug. I don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's a cool concept. It's mm-hmm. like a private club for um, African Americans, black mm-hmm. people, whatever you mm-hmm. identify as. Mm-hmm. A person of color and it's 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 that it's a it's a gathering place it's mm-hmm. like a club it's like a country club i guess you could say without a country we live next door to a country club and mm-hmm. let me tell you something it's, <laughs> i don't want to even if i had the money you know to to do that every day mm-hmm. i don't think i would join hey unless you go over there with uh 30 of your new favorite friends see that's that's what i said, I said <laughs> we, if we drop if we drop that on the country club membership they uh, we wouldn't make any new friends. Yeah. We would just take our old friends with us. I always make new friends though. You would. Yeah. I ain't trying to make I mean you connected to me, so you good. You got new friends here. Okay. So the last the 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 last point is get vulnerable. Right? So you you've done I you, love that you, one. That gone, one is such a good one. You've gone through this whole process, right? You're 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 init- you're assuming that people like you, you're going to these events, you're initiating conversation when you get there you're showing up consistently well what's gonna happen when you start talking with people when you start engaging it's like are you just gonna stay surface or are you going to be vulnerable with some of the things about your life right and letting I think people, people in. have a hard time being vulnerable letting people in breaking it down y'all that's how i got this man 30 31 years later. <laughs> i'm i was vulnerable i was open mm-hmm. he was too and when you know that about somebody you um relinquish all doubt and you work it you work you, and that's just on a friend basis on a relative basis yeah on a person to person basis on a spiritual being to a spiritual being basis you need to be open and honest with yourself and the only way you're doing it is if you're vulnerable and i know it's hard because people have hurt you in the past and everything but it's gonna be okay especially when you're just trying to make new friends or even new acquaintances mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay so let's get ready to wind this thing up okay so uh it's chin and Chiwenzi one hi guys love your channel hi we love you What's thanks up? for all you do planning to move to the arlington to the Ar- okay yes arlington in the house we live in arlington hubby and two kids by 2023 plan 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 go back and watch our other videos look at designing your life Mm -hmm. look at all the different places we talked about if you want um to uh talk to us one-on-one you can hop into the uh, description that we'll have uh at the in in the video and uh, make an appointment with us and we'd be happy to talk to you about moving here i love it i love it yes So we're going to bring this home with the following pointers designed to help you prep before meeting up with strangers, practicing ways of engaging with them and helping you to turn these initial meetings into friendships. All right. Okay. So the first one is finding an event, find an event. Oh, it's so easy. Event bright. Look for an event that you want to attend. Y'all ever been on event bright? Oh my gosh. They have so much stuff on there and sometimes it's free. So go to Eventbrite, mm-hmm. and there's another one. It's um, Event Noir. I think that's for people of color. Mm-hmm. Event Noir. I think it was, yeah, uh, Event Noir. So yeah. check those out. Sign up and go. Book club, hiking club, whatever yep. it is. Right. Find the time and the place that the group meets and continue. I mean, and commit to showing up. Go put, and don't be a fly on the wall. Put the details. What's the next one? Of the event in your calendar. The second one is to prepare yourself to interact. Oh, right, how do you do that? Right before the meetup, there are a few things you could do to increase your confidence in interacting with new people. A few hours before the event, do something to put you in a good mood. That might be <laughs> chatting with an old friend. It might be listening to music or doing some exercise. Oh, wait, wait. So that's what I would do. I would turn on some music and just uh, rock it out. Then another thing you can do is think about the strengths that you bring to your friendships. Oh, I love how deliberate this is. Mm -hmm. Be very deliberate about your movement in this this earth place, y'all. Maybe you're funny. Maybe you're deep. You know, you're a deep thinker. Maybe you're insightful. Yeah. Maybe you're very quick-witted. 
right? So whatever your strengths, keep reminding yourself of what those strengths are. I love that. Right? I always tell my kids, hey, play to your strengths. Yeah, right? we do. We do. Don't worry about double down. Don't don't worry about uh, doubling down so much on the things that you're not good at and just yeah, frustrating, stay away from the your, negativity. frustrating yourself and you're trying to like, I really need to get better in this area. It's like those things are going to happen organically, but they what are. you want to do is double down on your strengths. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so uh, make sure that you tell yourself that people will like you, that you're excited to meet them, and that uh, you repeat that self, repeat that to yourself a few times. Wait, wait, wait! Repeat what? People like me. Right before the event, okay. tell yourself that people will like you. People will like me, and will be excited to meet you. And people are going to be excited to meet me. Repeat this to yourself a couple of times. Oh, people will like me, and people will be excited to meet me. And then you feel the effects of this belief on your body. I love that. Yes, we do like the woo woo stuff. And then also notice any tension that's being released, and uh, notice how your shoulders are opening up. Oh, I love. Okay. You're so good, baby. It's so good. It's a good, it's a good yeah. stuff, right? All right. So the third thing is opening up a conversation with a stranger. Oh, how do you do this? Once you, you get to. This is the master right here. <laughs> listen, listen, y'all. This is the master. <laughs> Once you get to the event, open up conversation using what the author and sales trainer David Hoffield calls the insight and question method. This involves sharing a commentary on what's on what's going on around you and then asking a question about your companion's opinion of it, right? If you're at the book club, for example, you could say, I really like this so-and-so, so-and-so part of the book. What did you think about that? What was your favorite part? Ask the question. Right? You know, you go to the restaurant. This de- this decor in here is so bomb, Tracy. What do you think about I, it? I look at decor all right? the time. All right, then we got a couple more. Exchange contact information. Okay, yeah, let's do this. And and don't just DM people and just <laughs> texting is going to be fine. And yeah. and if the people turn out to be a weirdo, just block them. It's just not that big of a deal. It's just not that big of a deal. Hey, I really enjoy Or give this. them I I get people my Instagram. Hey, I really enjoyed this time with you. I I love to keep in touch with you. Can I have your number? And if you don't if you too if that weirds you out, okay, then back to Tracy Instagram. Tracy's default. Hey, let me have your social your social handle, right? And then you make a few thoughtful comments on somebody's social, and then it, it evolves into a friendship. And then, last but not least, follow up, y'all. Follow up, y'all. Follow, follow up. Follow make, up. Make, sure you, make sure you checking in on the person. Hey, I'm. Uh, we going to the meetup. I'm going to the same meetup you're going to. You want to meet for tea before? You want to meet for coffee after? Cool. It's just not that hard. So there you go. Some some tips and tricks of how to make friends as an adult. Well, that was the, the show for today, my loves. We uh, thank you so much for joining us. You could be anywhere yes. and we know we just love the fact that you're joining us here. We wanna say thank you. Yes. Uh, that we've, you know, really, really grown this channel mm-hmm. and you know, look for other things to uh, show up on the channel coming yep. up, especially in the fall. Mm-hmm. Look for a lot of things coming your way. I just got to hire a VA to That's help okay, me. Okay, but um, we're, we're coming with it, y'all. Thank you so much. You are so welcome, Marie. I'm glad the show is enjoyable and informative. Enjoy the rest of Juneteenth, too, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you guys need us, uh, you know, Trace and I are available for one-on-ones. We do that off-site off uh, after the show. So, you know, you can you can make an, uh, an, uh, a calendar leave with us, and we'll we'll talk with you. And if you, join, if you enjoyed your time with us today, make sure you join us again next Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And remember... Wherever you're going, don't just live there. Design your life there. We love you guys. We love you guys. It's Heath and Tracy.
super sticker hippo. Thank you, Care. Shout out to the regulars. Oh. Shout out to Care. <laughs> 